in the National Committee Organizing Program have a, a, a motto, and the motto is listening, power, and change. So within this concept, we thought about spoken. Mm -hmm. So spoken is a place where people from different culture, different background, uh, come together in a very non-judgmental um, space and use creative expression to explore societal issues, concern that everyone face, really and locally. I was lucky, lucky enough to facilitate a workshop um, with a lot of community organisers and um, we, they created poems based on issues that they felt passionate about and uh, their experience and advice that, you know, that they wanted to give. And uh, yeah, we, we created a collective poem. Um, so I thought it would be um, an honor, to be honest, to, to read out um, that, that poem to, to you today and kind of bring their spirit here. Um, so, so yeah, first of all, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna read it. It's called Collectivism. Collaborate, choose your tribe wisely. Open up, there is strength in vulnerability. Listen, learn, ask questions. Be authentic, make organized action, community centric. Recognize your strengths, accept your limitations and own it. Give truth and transparency, expand your horizons, stand in solidarity. Choose humanity over money. Love over hatred for indifference will not drown out injustice but allow space for it. We must resist, rise up and speak together. International and intergenerational relationships make us only stronger. Together we can transform our world forever. You can begin today. It just takes a lot of faith. Faith in all those times when all seems lost, but still you carried on imagining a better future together and fought to make it happen because uniting under a common goal means never feeling alone, which can ignite a fire large enough within to make unstable systems burn. Trust in each other that you will win. And if that doesn't work out, the worst you can do is learn. Learn and research. Education is an investment in knowledge and pays the highest rate of interest. Rest, rise, repeat. Never underestimate resting. It's not that easy, but it's a sustainable solution to self-awareness of the psyche. Understanding and empathy to the warrior inside, ensuring you muster the strength to stand and consistently rise. Taking a small step of change every day when you feel you're losing the fight. Allow others to lend a hand and provide. Invest in your local assets and then never stop challenging what you think is right. Always look at the bigger picture, which may, over time, change. Business can be your friend and principles your most trusted guide, but listen to experience because you're walking in the footsteps of a long line who trod effective steps towards a better future for their entire lives because community is a basic need and a human right. Healthy communities depend on equality and social justice. Austerity is a lie, but nourish a soul with different perspectives. Grow your collective power and respect it. Eat together, act together, pass it on. This is a community organizer's book of revelations. Revelations, remember, everyone has value and the power to empower each other. Leaving no one behind, get to know one another. A community's love triumphs over hate. Investigate the past, but only action in the present creates change. No time like now. So let's help communities find the solutions to help themselves. Solutions. See the problem and move towards it. Own it and know it with precision. Listen. Unite with others who share our passion and with integrity together we can make a difference. Inspire whoever can instigate change by organising realistic aims and executing plans made but never forget to celebrate the change we have made because tomorrow is another day and we do it all again. Thank you. The next poem I'm going to do is a bit, is a bit more personal. Um, it's kind of where I was before I um, was able to find uh, a sense of community and roots and, um, and discover community organising as well which made me feel like I actually um, could uh, make a difference. Um, but firstly I just want to say that again obviously being um, fairly young um, 
when you were talking about, um, was it Adam? Where's Adam? Where is he? Oh, you're right at the back, hi. <laughs> um, talking about um, adultism, I just wanted to say, say a quick thing um, from the other side as well. Um, and that is, for me, feeling, being in this room with, with lots of people from different ages as well, um, there's often this kind of intimidation from, from my point of view of, you know, a kind of uh, fear of, um, of being patronised or feeling like I'm, I'm not good enough. Um, but also a fear of that I might learn something that, that's not original <laughs> and that I haven't first thought up. Um, and uh, yeah, and, um, and also of um, kind of looking at you guys and, and um, you, seeing, you seeing me um, are kind of needing help and, and being scared to actually sit down and ask somebody um, who is older and wiser um, and has experience for help um, as well because um, we kind of like to feel like we can do everything. Um, and, and this is why I got into the situation that I got in, which is what my poem is about, which is why I want to talk about it. Um, and it's my experiences of homelessness, and um, it's called Not Mad. I left a house of rubble. Closed the door on a whole heart of trouble. trouble. Left a man to love alone, quit my job, and left alone. I experienced homelessness. I tried to adventure it, explore it, rise above it, adore it, and no one would have known it. Yet how dare I use that word to cloak myself in woefulness and sympathy. Me, a young white high achiever with a first class degree because I wasn't addicted to drugs and I hadn't had a baby, I wasn't punched out of the door. It's not as if I wasn't welcome anymore, but I had to leave. Which means that all of a sudden, you feel as if you deserve the punishment of the streets. And because people think you chose it, you seek relief and redemption in losing it all so that your soul may get clean. And when I think back now, it was myself I tried to leave. As if I was physically trying to close the door on someone I didn't want to be. So I climbed face first out of hell and I just kept on walking and hoping that this shadow would just give up and go somewhere else. And not mad, but nomad, I noticed things. That I no longer feared the rain, and I was grateful for the pictures the trees made in the puddles the next day. That my suitcases no longer meant a holiday. Increased vulnerability every day, projection onto everyone and judgment of my own stay, the fear that I felt in a sea of faces that wanted me to go away. And I fucked up one night. I gave my sleeping bag to a really nice young man sleeping rough on the streets and when I walked away I thought, shit, I needed that for me. And seeking sleep, seeking showers, seeking food replaced my commuting, computing, shopping and news. And you can't be picky about when and where because if you refuse or you're scared, it's gone. So don't you dare. And the other night I sat while friends of friends laughed at me. They spoke of another girl who could dance and sing, who was so proper and so prim, and who could have thought of a life that she had lived that was so unlike someone of her type to have been given? Because you can't be beautiful and be miserable at the same time, it's not written. <coughs> and you can't be homeless and have a job. You can't complain if you've not been forced. You're too clean to beg for mercy, too in between my categories, which means I don't know how to define you, which means I can't confine you or find you on my system. At which point, I wished them a cheery goodbye as I disappeared into the night, too tired to even cry. <coughs> and now, I stand with you, speaking with you, and everything that I was so terrified to find because I was scared of losing my mind has now emerged from the sea of the unliving and into the light. And every time that I get the urge to fight it, to destroy my peace because I'm scared I don't deserve it and I fear being rejected. I just seek where I feel connected. And I look at my partner and my dog asleep with the sun streaming in and I think of my loved ones and my books and my poems and my peace and I look in the mirror at the reflection of me and I am free. And even though I am all that my home needs to be, I want you to know that you are all so welcome anytime to visit me.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.